In this lesson, we'll look at how to perform the two-way analysis of variance all by hand, and we'll do this by answering the following question. But before we begin, unlike the one-way ANOVA, the two-way ANOVA test, as the name implies, involves two factors. For example, pretend you are examining the weight of trees in two different locations, and both locations have been treated similarly, as shown in this table. The listed weights are partitioned into eight categories according to two variables. And for future reference, each of these subcategories are called cells. The two-way ANOVA test allows us to examine the effect of interaction between two factors. We say that there is an interaction between two factors if the effect of one of the factors changes for different categories of the other factor. With that being said, the question reads, Consider the following data from an experiment that compares the weights of poplar trees grown in two different locations. At each location, the methods used to grow the trees were as follows. You have none, fertilizer, irrigation, and fertilizer and irrigation. Our job is to conduct a test to determine whether the weight of trees is affected by location and treatment. In a two-way ANOVA, we must consider three possible effects on the weights of these poplar trees. The first and most important being the effects of an interaction between site and treatment, then the effects of site and the effects of treatment. The reason why A is most important is because depending on the results of A, it dictates whether we continue the test or not. So we begin by testing the null hypothesis that there is no interaction between the two factors. And the hypothesis that you have to write is the following where the null hypothesis says that no interaction between the sites and treatment exist, and the alternative is the opposite of that, where an interaction between site and treatment exists. Now, if we reject the null hypothesis because we have enough evidence to accept the alternative, then we stop the procedure. Otherwise, if we do not reject the null hypothesis and claim no interaction between the site and treatment occurs, then we move on to testing for B and C. Now, I'll let you know ahead of time that we do end up not rejecting the null hypothesis. So expect us to test B and C later on in the video. Now, as you would expect, there are a ton of calculations involved with the two-way ANOVA test. For example, you need to find out the sum of this row, the sum of that row, the sum of each column, individual cells, and the entire sum that you get by adding up all these numbers. Then using those values, we can end up filling in this ANOVA table using formulas that will be shown to you in a few minutes, much the same way we did with the one-way ANOVA test. But there are so many empty values here that it will take a while to do. The sum of this row, I've gone ahead and done it for you already, is equal to 10.07, and the sum for the second row is 13.37. We'll call this column of values x, subscript i, and those two dots. And remember, a dot appearing in place of a subscript indicates that the missing subscript has been summed out. i represents the rows, as you would expect, since it's the first subscript. j represents the index of columns. And k represents the index of individual observations within the subcategory. So I'll just write down here for reference i, j, k. Now let's sum up each column. And I'll write down that number right underneath here where I have x dot j dot, where we're only concerned about each of the columns. The sum of this one is 3.21. The next is 4.81, 2.21, and 13.21, as shown on the screen. You also need to find the sum of each individual cell. And rather than writing them down underneath, I'll create a small table here to summarize everything that I've found. So in case you're confused, adding these numbers up gives you 0 0.92, adding these gives you 1.66, and so on. The sum of all of these numbers combined, I'll write down underneath here, and that should be 23.44. We're still not ready to fill in that ANOVA table. Next, what I'll do is take the square of this value that will be important for us later on, and that's written as x subscript dot 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 raised to the power of 2. 23.44 raised to the power of 2 gives us approximately 549.4, or 549.4336. We also need to square each of these individual values 
and sum them up. Of course, that would take a really long time to do by hand, so make sure that you have a calculator handy or some program that should be able to get you these values quickly. So if I sum up each individual value, so subscript IJK, square it and sum them, which I'll represent using this Greek letter sigma, I, J, K. So technically we have 0 0.15 raised to the power of 2 plus 0 0.02 raised to the power of 2 and so on all the way until we finish. The value you should get is 32.4534. You will also need to do the same for these two values. So I'll take 10.07 raised to the power of 2 plus 13.37 raised to the power of 2. And that's represented as x to the power of 2 i dot dot and the sum. The value is 280.1618. We need to do the same sort of thing for these values. So we have the sum of x sub dot j dot raised to the power of 2. And we have 3.21 raised to the power of 2 plus 4.81 raised to the power of 2 and so on. The sum should be 212.8284. There's one last sum and it is these values right here. So we'll take each of these values square them and add them up just like this. That's represented as the sum of i and the sum of j x squared i j dot. And it's as shown up here. You should end up with a total sum of 108.6336. I'll erase the annotations that I've added to this table just to prevent any sort of confusion moving forward. The numbers that I'm highlighting will come in handy when making our ANOVA table. Now just as before in the one-way ANOVA test, there were formulas associated with each of these values. The formulas are not written here, but I'll write them down for you so you have reference for next time you need to use this procedure. We'll begin by calculating the sum of squares for each of these, and the total will be represented as SS sub T, this will be SS sub E. Interactions will be represented as SS sub A and B. Here we have SS sub A and for treatments is SS sub B. To get SS sub T, we use the formula shown on the screen. You remember this sum when we found it up here? This number 32.4534 we'll be taking that number and substituting it in for here. Then we will subtract one minus the factors i, j, and k, i being two, j being four, and k being five. x to the power of two subscript dot 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 is this part, the one we found earlier as 549.4336. All of that will get substituted into this formula and you end up with your sum of squares total. Your final answer for SST should be 18.71756. So you can take this number and place it right here. The other four formulas for SSB, SSA, and so on will be written on the screen. That's the formula for SSB. And as you can see, this part has remained the same. And you'll find the same thing for the other formulas that I'll be writing as well. Here are the formulas for SSA and E. SSE is a little different. It ends like this. And formula for SSAB involves taking SST, the total, and subtracting these three from that. Now remember, given our initial calculations with the original table, these formulas, while they look complicated, those values can easily be substituted in for what we found earlier. Let's go ahead now and throw those numbers into our table. We have 7.547, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.
for site, SSA was 0 0.27275. For SSE, it's 10.72668. And for SSA, we take the total, as explained earlier, 18.71756 and subtract 7.547 minus 0 0.27275 minus 10.72668. And we get 0 0.17113. To get the degrees of freedom for treatment, we take the number of treatments, there were four, and minus one. So I have four minus one is three. For sight, it's two minus one, so it's one. The degrees of freedom for the interactions can be found by taking I minus one times J minus one. I being two, subtract one, that's one. And four minus one is three. So three times one is three. The degrees of freedom for the error is the equation shown on your screen i times j bracket k minus 1. So we have 2 times 4 times 4, that's 32. And the total is i times j times k minus 1, which amounts to 39. To get the mean square, we take each of these values and divide them by their degrees of freedom. So 7.547 divided by 3, let's use our calculator, is 2.51, and the rest should be what you see you do not find the mean square value for the total. So leave this part empty. Now, the moment of truth. We are looking for the value of F observed. And to calculate F observed for the treatment, we will take 2.51, this value, and divide it by the error, 0 0.3352. This gives us 7.5049. And then the same thing for site and interaction. So 0 0.27275 divided by 0 0.3352 and 0 0.05721 divided by 0 0.3352. The F observed for the site and interaction is what you see. So our first hypothesis was for the interaction. This value right here is the most important value right now. We need to compare this to the F critical, and the F critical can be located on a table. We'll call it FC, and it's based on the alpha value of 0 0.05, DF1, and DF2, where DF1 is that associated with the interaction, which was 3, and this is error. That was 3, and that is 32. Finding this number in a table, you will get 2.9. And since 0 0.17 F observed is less than F critical, that means we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now let me show you on an F distribution chart, FC is here. The rejection region is after it, and it falls short of that. Somewhere here, F observed. Because it does not fall in the rejection region, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So to conclude, it does not appear that the weights of these poplar trees are affected by an interaction between site and treatment. Now, if there was an interaction, you would stop the procedure. But since there is no interaction, we test the main effects next. So we move on to step two. And again, we have to create two new hypotheses, one for the site and one for the treatment. As you can see, I've gone ahead and written down the two sets of hypotheses. For the first one is for site, and for the bottom one is for treatment, and that can be represented symbolically as mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, and that of mu4, because there are four treatments, and this one, I can say at least two means differ. Well, we have the F observed for the site, and we calculated that moments ago as 0 0.8122. And the F observed for the treatments was calculated to be 7.5049. Each of these will have their own F critical. So the F critical for this one, you can find it by taking alpha of 0 0.05, 
degrees of freedom one and 32. This one amounts to 4.15 and you can find that in a table. The F critical for the treatments is done by taking alpha of 0 0.05, 3 and 32. That's the same thing as before. I think it was 2.9. The F observed here is smaller than the F critical. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we have insufficient evidence to say that the means are not equal for the site. I'll write down, do not reject that. Here, we have an F observed of 7.5 and it's greater than 2.9. Because it's greater, then we have enough evidence to reject the null. So we will reject that in favor of this hypothesis that at least two means differ. The treatment means are not equal. Overall, the sight of the poplar trees does not seem to affect the weight, but there's sufficient evidence for the treatment at 0 0.05 to conclude a significant difference between at least two treatment means. That is, the treatments of the poplar trees does seem to affect their weights. That was a really big process, and I hope you followed along until the very end. And that is how to do the two-way analysis of variance by hand.